I'm Tom Meggett from Tom Meggett Photography. I've got a treat for you guys today. Turns out that today it was is going to be raining or snowing all across Scotland except near Aberdeen, which is about two, two and a half hours away from where I live. And uh, I decided to leave early this morning, but not early enough to go there for the sunrise. Uh, but I'm going to be there uh, about 10 minutes or so. And what's so special about the location that I've chosen is one of the most famous Scottish castles of all. It's Donota Castle. And for those of you who've seen the movie Hamlet with Mel Gibson, I believe it was done in the 80s. Uh, well, it was actually shot there. Uh, and I had a chance to scout the place very briefly about three weeks ago during one of my workshops. Uh, we were a bit late, it was just on the way to where we were going for the night and um, just had a chance to take a few shots but it was really, really uh, too dark to get something really, really good. However, I could see really the potential of that location. So, I'm very, very excited. Uh, this is a location that I've always wanted to uh, capture and I think today might actually be uh, the, the right time. Uh, of, obviously, if it was spring with flowers and all, it might be more interesting. We're still in winter, uh, but we'll see what we get. We're going to have the sea, we're going to have a castle. Uh, I think there's also some kind of a waterfall or stream. So uh, I look forward to it. All right, let's talk to you once we're there. So I must admit, I just want to scout around and see what I can get from here. So we're going to be here for a while. Uh, pretty much most of the day, I think. So we've got all the time in the world. All right, guys, the first thing that I see is that we've got a beautiful view here of the castle. Obviously, with a GoPro, you see it so far away because it's so, such a wide angle. But using a telephoto lens, it would work greatly. The thing is, I think it's just not the right time yet because you see the sun is not high enough in the sky and it does not let those walls. So I'm not going to take the shot right now, but we will come back later today to take it. And I think it's quite remarkable. We've got this kind of a rock here, that cliff going over here and then on the other side. And I, I quite like it. So we'll come back to this. You see guys the castle is here and I think I want to go right over there to use that light that sun hitting the walls of the castle so I'm gonna go all around Alright guys, so I'm so excited. I think I found a spot here. I've got my sun about 90 degrees to my subject. That makes you think about 
polarizing filter, of course, that's going to help us reveal the blue from the sky, the blue from the sea. And because the sky is blue today, the sea will be even bluer, which is fantastic. We've got this beautiful light hitting the, the, the castle. Well, once it's not behind a cloud. And in terms of framing, I really love those rocks at the front of the cliff right there. We've got a little bit of white water. We also have white water on the bottom left here. So it was important to use the widest angle uh, that I could get, which is 24 millimeters. And I'm using the tilt shift lens because it's the sharpest lens that I have. And I'm also using a little bit of shift to frame my shot properly. I don't want to go into detail about the tilt shift lens yet because I want to do special episode about it. So um, I'm also using a neutral density filter, a graduated one, a hard one to stop. Why hard? Well, because we've got a very straight horizon. Why using uh, a graduated filter in the first place? Well, simply to darken a little bit of the sky to make, because I needed to get more light from the foreground and um, two stops seems to be doing fine. What we get, ISO 100, F13 and 0.3 second at the moment. It will eventually change. What you have on your screen right now is the shot that I've got. Uh, so I'm going to stay here a little bit longer, try to see with the different uh, changes of light and then we will go at the bottom of the uh, beach over there and try to get some shots, maybe play with the water and some long exposures and then we'll go at, at the far end there uh, with this nice angle that we saw when we just arrived and later on we will go behind the castle there's another beach but I'm not in hurry because because my son is over here if I was there right now I would end up having a uh, silhouette and this is not what I want and a silhouette is basically my sh my subject would be totally dark because of the brightness of the background and that's not what I want so I'm going to keep shooting and I'll talk to you later on Surprisingly, just before I left, I just noticed that there was uh, some kind of a monument on the hill there. And uh, by using the 70 to 200 lens, I was able to bring it closer and play with the, um, the cliffs. And uh, well, what you see right now on your screen is the result of it, which I found quite interesting. We'll see how it looks in, um, once we're back home in front of a computer, but it looks promising. I think we're blessed today, you know, considering all the rain that we've had and, and the fact that it's currently raining and snowing in the rest of the country and we have this beautiful sun and blue sky. It just feels like heaven. It was definitely worth it to drive two and a half hours this morning just for that. And I just can't wait to see what the day, what the rest of the day holds for us. Amazing. I quite like the composition we have here. We have the castle in the background. We've got this V shape created by the ridge. We have a river 
I mean the stream at the bottom uh, is quite interesting and also we have a, di uh, a distribution of light that I find quite interesting we've got the light over there on the um, on the rock on the castle rock we also have some light here in the foreground and we've got this shade in the middle and I think it's, it's quite interesting um, I'm trying to get as much as possible in focus here so I'm using f13 also I'd like to capture the birds in the flying around the tower there and because of that although it's quite sunny with f13 I'm not freezing them so I actually had to bring the ISO up to 400 I'm also using the uh, release cable just because I don't want to use the two second delay because I don't want to miss on the birds I'm using the polarizing filter and I'm using two graduated filters. One three stop hard uh, and that is slightly above the castle. And then I'm using a two stop soft that is going to gently give us a smooth graduation from the bottom of the castle all the way to um, the sky. And um, so I'm ISO 400, uh, F13, and it's giving us uh, an exposure of the 30th the 13th of a second so I'm just waiting for the sun now to pierce through and just let the castle and that will be it guys so I tried to capture the rock slightly a little bit further up and it didn't work the reason why it didn't work the composition was fantastic the problem was the light you see the light is coming right there and because it's, it's basically brightening the water so I would need a filter to darken a little bit of water the sky is still bright and because I was a little bit further closer to the edge I also had a piece of foreground and the foreground was bright as well and so because of that I basically needed a filter on the right a filter on the left a filter on the top and a filter on the bottom just to have my subject lit properly that's just not possible so what I'm going to do now is I'm going back to the car going to drive to the next town get myself a fish and chips come back and I reckon about an hour or two hours from now when the light is going to be right here it's going to work much better and we're going to capture it again all right let's go for lunch Alright guys, so we're back in the office and I hope you enjoy the first part of the video. Now we're actually going to see the few photographs that I decided to keep and I'm going to walk you through the development process as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed the castle as much as I did. I didn't tell you much about the castle other than being the set for the movie Hamlet with Mel Gibson and Glenn Close in 1990. Um, you know, the location of this castle is so extraordinary that that's what made it so famous uh, or across history um, there were so many battles taking place there and the buildings that you actually see uh, in the movie to, in the movie that I've done not Hamlet but it's the same um, they were actually built uh, between the 1400 and 1600 but it's believed that the castle is way older than that uh, maybe the th three um, middle of Middle Ages and um, and then an epic battle when uh, took place there. Uh, there was um, William Wallace who actually burned it to the ground at some point when uh, the English was residing in there. Uh, and then centuries later, you had um, the famous Oliver Cromwell who actually sieged the castle for eight months in the 17th century, uh, middle of the 17th century in uh, 1652, uh, for eight months. And that really tells you how... Uh, defensible this castle is um, because of its location and 
Um, what else to say about it? Uh, yes, there's a famous um, story, actually. Um, I don't know if it's true. You know, history is written by the winners. But um, during this eight-month siege with Cromwell, and the story goes that um, the jewels, the crown jewels, and the Scottish crown jewels were actually in the castle. And Cromwell wanted to actually get hold of them, uh, as he had done with the English one. And um, one of the maid actually was meant to believe was in uh, a barge at the bottom of a cliff and her husband would actually um, sl um, br bring down the jewels in a basket for her to take away and hide them uh, so Cromwell will not be able to uh, to get hold of them so that's how the, the story goes but anyway here what you see are the three photographs that I decided to keep and develop so let's walk through um, what I did so let's pick up the first one and um, let's go to the develop module. So initially, this photograph was like this. I'm going to show you the, the, the original. There's not much done to this one. Um, you see, the reason why what I didn't like in this one, and that's the original, you can see it here, uh, it's because I could actually bring it down. Uh, actually, after the reset, sorry. I need to go on the reset. Um, what I didn't like about this was the tone, the white balance of it, but I could not just simply change the white balance of the overall image because it would change the color of my blue in the sea as well as the color in the sky. And what I like to do is go from this uh, yellowish tone on the rocks to a more colder tone uh, towards the blue. So therefore it would change the water, making more saturated and that's not what I wanted. So let me show you what I did. Basically, first off, you can see I changed the format. We went from a two-third to a 16 by 9 ratio. And the way I've actually chose how I was uh, making the, the, the crop was basically putting two-thirds of my scene being the castle and the water at the front and keeping one-third for the sky, which I believe made sense. And as well as um, uh, lining the horizon, it was not far off, but uh, just to, uh, to do it a little bit, as you can see here. 0.44. So then I told you about the white balance. So what I did is I used a brush and let me just click on here so you can actually see the effect. It basically covers all the ground. That's basically it except the beach because we, we don't really care about that. Uh, and you can see all I did was basically changing the temperature to minus 16. Nothing else was done. And then when I did this I actually realized that here you have a darker uh, grass and that was turned out to be um, very very green for some reason so I decided to actually tone down the saturation as you can see here on the right panel minus 30 so there was be a better balance um, and then the next point was right here this little patch of water that we see was a little bit too bright uh, and so I decided to increase the saturation a little bit as well as uh, bringing down the highlights and slightly the exposure as well. And that's it, nothing else was done, uh, other than obviously um, doing the usual uh, highlight down. Did I actually use, I think, did I? No, I didn't use, uh, I didn't use the graduated filter. So I only used the uh, highlight down uh, just to bring the clouds uh, better. And that was it. And a little bit of contrast, as well as the usual sharpening right here. So that's it for this one. Then when it comes to the other one, um, this was the original, uh, very yellowish because I was playing with the um, white balance while I was at the camera uh, and to see how far I could go. Uh, but here, obviously, it's too yellowish. And I figured, uh, I was wondering what I was going to do with this one. What I liked was obviously the birds. And the birds remind me of Hitchcock movie. And I thought that it was something dark about this so that was conflicting with um, this very bright yellowish uh, tone on the overall of the image so that's the reason why I decided to actually go black and white and basically what I've done was going black and white here as you can see on the right panel but as soon as you do this um, you basically change the tone into black and white but everything is going to be rather flat so you need to play with contrast and this is what I've done. I increased the contrast, played with the highlights, put it down to get the sky back. And I brought a little bit of clarity to get to reveal some more detail. 
then everything else, as you can see here on the left, is all about brush. So if I just click on the, on the brush tool here, you will see what I actually did. Uh, let me just switch this auto to always so you can actually see where the, um, the pins are. Uh, the first job was for me to darken this um, this rock here because by darkening the, the rock, although I, I did use a filter, a real fi graduated filter when I did the shot, obviously I hadn't I didn't, I didn't foresee as far as um, developing in black and white. So what I wanted to do was to really bring the castle behind that rock popping out. And to do that, I needed to darken the foreground. So to darken the foreground, I actually didn't choose to use the brush. I actually decided to go with a graduated filter. Uh, and what you can see is that I basically brought down the exposure as well as the highlight and a little bit of clarity and that's it. I also used the brush inside the graduated filter to basically remove this part which would have been affected by the graduated filter. So it's a little bit more clean uh, as you can see. Then I used the brush tool. And so with the brush tool, what I did basically is if we click on this one, it was more about giving some uh, relief to uh, to the rock. So by darkening the shadows right here, I would make sure that you would actually distinguish the front rock here to the other part of this ridge. And that's basically all I did. And here's the same thing. I darkened this part here because it's meant to be darker than the rest. So as you can see, if I click on this, all I did was darkening this part and giving some um, volume to the rock. Whereas here, what I did was basically highlighting this edge here to set, help separating the ridge from the left on the left from the ridge to, uh, on the right. And the final brush here for the ridge is basically darken a little bit this highlight that we had here. That was it. And then the final part was to do with the castle itself, which was a little bit too dark. So I brought up the exposure a little bit, brought up the highlight, brought up the shadows a little bit, and a little bit of clarity, but not too much the shadow um, too overexposed, so uh, it wouldn't be a flat result. And that's basically it. And then the usual uh, contrast and highlight down and, uh, and then the sharpening. That's basically all there is to it. The final image, it's uh, this one. And uh, I didn't, so I did go back two hours later, but I didn't get the shot that I was hoping for simply because at this season, of the year, this period of the year, you would not be able to have the sun hitting that side of the cliff on the overall. And I think actually it's even better because um, here you can see really the edge. Whereas if I was actually having the light going to, into the side of the rock here on the left, I, I wouldn't get the same result. I wouldn't get the light here on the edge and it would be pretty dark. Uh, all around there. So I'm quite pleased with this uh, with this light right here and it helps as well just on the thin edge of the castle tower here giving us some relief as well some volume to the to the scene which I quite like. So what I did here I first started in Photoshop uh, to remove uh, the people here the people there as well as um, the panels here that said do not cross a danger. As a matter of fact, I did cross them. I just I just went across and took that little path to go to the beach because that was the only way to get there. Um, and and then I I didn't get any much. Um, I didn't get great result on that side. So that's the reason why you didn't see the video of me being there. Uh, another thing as well that I remove in Photoshop and I'm going to show you the result is these rocks, uh, two rocks here and the white water. My policy is to never remove something that is permanent. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to remove them is because we're talking about bright water here. Uh, it was catching too much my eye when I was looking at the photograph that I decided, well, actually, if, if it was high tide, uh, we would probably not see the rocks. So it's okay to, uh, to hide these ones. So here is the result uh, that I've got at the end. So I decided to go black and white as well. But you can see the people have disappeared. Uh, the, the signs over here along the fence uh, have disappeared as well as uh, the rocks and the white water. Uh, why did I decide to actually go for black and white? Uh, I think it's because I was not inspired by the color version. I think 
when you've got so much difference of tones here you see the blue uh, which is more like an aqua color of the water here it's the hue is a little bit different I didn't it's very difficult to actually um, uh, retouch that color and getting something quite um, universal uh, and as well and not looking fake and that's why I was not after um, so that's the reason why I just said to myself well actually I'm gonna go black and white it's gonna help me show the volume the structure of this rock and this location uh, much more than the color so what did I do with all this well as you can see there's a lot of brush going on here you can see it on the right side um, what did I start with I actually started with a white balance but uh, clearly didn't really work so I went with the black and white uh, the basic settings here bring up the contrast because we're talking black and white highlight down to help with the sky clarity up a little bit and the shadows a little bit up and then everything else is going to be the brush so here with the brush what do we have well we've got one here on the building and that was basically bringing the shadow um, highlighting the shadows a little bit because I, I had some kind of vignetting uh, not vignetting silhouette sorry uh, where the, sha the the castle was too uh, was too dark and remember the reason why the castle was dark is because I had to use a graduated filter um, and I actually used two of them uh, but it was still going across and darkening my castle too much uh, so I decided to bring it uh, up a little bit uh, here what we have is probably the most interesting um, brush uh, use that I've done here uh, it's all those little uh, spot strikes that I did to uh, help with the volume uh, basically darkening the shadows uh, and to keep some relief again uh, increase the um, the effect and as you can see you can really see the the shadows and so on all, all across the uh, all along uh, the cliffs uh, almost a 360 view of it and the final pen here was to do with the, the um, some kind of a halo effect that was around the building you know you sometimes you end up having this halo effect even before going to post-production and that's because of the high contrast the the huge difference between the, the the highlights and the shadows and it creates this kind of a halo effect all around the building here which I didn't like and it looks too much like a, a, a bad development if you live it so that's why I, I basically brought down the highlight down and uh, and the whites as well bring it down to help smoothen the whole thing uh, I did use uh, two graduated filters um, here in post-production on top of the real one that I used when I um, did the shot. The first one is going to be the sky and of course using the brush again to remove the effect of the graduated filter on the building. That's the advantage of using a digital graduated filter. You can't do this in real life but I still maintain that there is value in using real graduated filter over just a digital one. You end up having a great image to start with when you uh, begin your development uh, instead of trying to uh, repair things. Here my photograph was not broken. It's all about uh, making it better so the message is actually conveyed uh, properly. So here obviously the um, as I said, it's basically the contrast up to increase the, the, the clouds. Uh, then the next one was to do with the, um, the shadows, darkening the shadows to reveal the sky even better. Uh, and that was it, and the highlights down, obviously. And the next one is to do with darkening the side of, um, of the hill. Because of the sun was just hitting it, it was just too bright. So I need to get a better balance uh, between. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then obviously the usual sharpening. But bef but before I did this, what I did is I used the split toning. I know I've, I never talked about split toning in a previous episode, but basically I'll do something about it. But here, just what it is, is basically giving a little bit of tone, a little bit of color uh, to the highlights and to the shadows. So here I went, and that's how you create sepia, by the way. It's a combination of um, colors. When you're in monochrome, you use colors to uh, get the, 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 the highlights and the shadows, and that gives you sepia. So here what I did is I went for something a little bit purpley, uh, close to magenta uh, for the highlights, and something warmer 
for uh, the shadows just because I didn't want something too metallic, too gray. Uh, that was the by default if you um, just go black and white. And that's all it is. So I'd like to know in the uh, comment section of uh, the article what you guys uh, think of, um, first of all, the overall video, uh, the experience, going with me on the field, uh, in the field, and uh, and follow me as I create uh, my work, uh, as well as sharing with you uh, as to wh what I'm doing and why I do it. And then the second section about talking about development, how I process my own work. Uh, if you find this interesting, uh, please uh, put that in a comment. I would really um, uh, appreciate getting your feedback. Uh, and then finally, is which of this photograph is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? I hope so. Um, as for me, I personally prefer uh, the monochrome. Uh, I think the color one is a nice postcard, uh, but it's somebody probably has taken the same one. Whereas the second one with the birds, I know for a fact that nobody will ever take that shot uh, because the birds would be different if ever again there. Uh, and the other one is slightly different as well. So uh, for me, I think number two and number three uh, would be my favorite, but which one is yours or which are your, uh, your preference? So that's it for today. And until next time, this is Tommy Good saying, if you like it, well, capture it.